My dear brothers and sisters, it happened to two soldiers. One was a dull soldier and the other one was a very active soldier. And the active soldier was always active, the dull fellow was always dull. And it happened that the dull soldier was wounded. And when he was wounded, somehow there was a good chemistry between them. They would always support each other. And when this dull soldier was wounded, and when he needed blood, the active soldier gave him the blood, and the blood was transfused into his body. And immediately the dull soldier said, Now, I feel as though I am with a new life. My dear friends, each one of you come for this Eucharist should also say the same when you leave the Mass. When you say, go in peace, the Mass is ended, you have to say, I feel as though I have a new life. And if that is not there, then you have just come for a routine celebration, just come through the door and go back home, nothing great has happened. I'll take you to some of the important aspects you can see on the screen that I have made these points for you as I preach. I will go through these points. The first one you find in John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So, we see the power of the Word. If you take the first chapter in the Bible, Genesis, God said, Let there be light. The Word came out of His mouth. Did the light come? Yes. When we tell somebody to switch on the light, you go do it, we'll say. But here, the word that came out of the mouth of the Father, let there be light. That word really brought the light and so the creation. Then we have this word became flesh, and that is the Son of God. And that is how you know very well the word became flesh to dwell amongst us even today as you come to celebrate. The next important aspect is the Passover, where we see in the chapter 12 of Exodus, you have the first Passover of the Israelites. Then Exodus 16, you have the bread from heaven, manna falling. And then you have on chapter 26 of Exodus, the Ark of the Covenant, where the bread, the commandment and the staff of Aaron was kept. And that was the Ark of the Covenant. And then we have in John's Gospel, chapter 2, where Jesus changes water into wine. And that becomes a real miracle and the first miracle for Jesus Christ. Then we have Matthew and Mark reporting the multiplication of the loaves and the fish. All the Gospels report to us the Last Supper. That is the institution of the Eucharist, the Holy Mass. All the Gospels report the shedding of blood from the cross. So we know from where did the blood come. Then we see in Luke's Gospel chapter 24, this beautiful incident after the resurrection, where these two disciples walking down the road to Emos, Jesus comes as a stranger, opens the word to them, and when he goes inside their house, breaks the bread, their eyes are open. That is the first Mass after the Resurrection. All the sacraments, remember, were instituted by Jesus Christ only after the Resurrection. Therefore, the first Mass is the celebration for each and every one of us. As we see, their eyes were open and their hearts were burning as He talked to them on the road. The next part is Paul who wants to tell you something more. He says, whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's glory. It comes because you proclaim. And that is the reason why today, when you come here, we do it in His memory. In the memory of Jesus, every Mass is celebrated, my dear brothers and sisters. I'll take you to John's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 37, which Jesus says, Come to me all who are hungry. In other words, he tells us something very beautiful in 
John's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 35, he says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Now we know one beautiful aspect in this, that he says, whoever comes to me will never be hungry. That is why you have come here. Because we have so much of hunger in ourselves, that spiritual life I want. Therefore you come here with that hunger. There is also the other hunger, I want this, I want that, I want my name, my fame, my money, my this, my that. But all that will never satisfy you. But what Jesus says, come to me. If you come to him, that hunger is satisfied. That hunger is there in us. And it is only he who can satisfy. Now coming there is not enough. He further says, whoever believes, will, believes in me will never be thirsty. Now coming to him and then believing in him is important. Coming here just for a mass and then going away is not enough. You have to believe in him, then only your thirst goes away. And if you don't believe in him, your hunger remains, your thirst remains, and you will be searching for him still. But here, my dear brothers and sisters, what has happened here is the real food. Therefore, when Jesus sat with his disciples, and then he said, This is my body. The bread that he took becomes the body. Then he takes the cup of wine and he says, this is my blood. Now looking at the aspect, we know very well the words coming out of the mouth of the Son of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity, consubstantial in presence and matter. Because the Father said, let there be light, there was light. Because the Son says, this is my body, it is the body of Christ. This is my blood, it is the blood of Christ. And that is why today we should learn about the transubstantiation of Christ. The bread and wine, which is in the form of bread and wine, totally changes, transubstantiate itself into the body and the blood of Christ. That is what happens on the altar. This is the same thing that you heard in today's first reading. Moses explains to all of them, I am sprinkling the blood of the Lamb. And this blood that I am sprinkling anoints you to be the people of Yahweh. That is the covenant. Now that covenant had the blood of the Lamb. This covenant, again on the same altar of God, is the new covenant. Therefore, the Passover celebrations are gone. It is over. Passover celebrations are no more in the Catholic Church. But there is the new celebration, that is the new covenant, where the blood of the Son of God, the blood of the Lamb, He becomes the scapegoat. He is the one who was crucified on the cross. Therefore, you find what happens on the altar is real, true, presence of Christ. That is the reason why, my dear brothers and sisters, we see that God wants each one of you to be a person ready to receive his body, ready to receive his blood. Some of you must have received it very beautifully on your first Holy Communion Day, isn't it? White dress, this, that and all, you must have desired it. How did the Lord taste for you? Wonderful. Made my confession yesterday. Today I received my communion. That is the state in which you receive. And today how are you receiving? Mother Teresa says something very beautiful. She says, whenever you come for Mass, remember that this is your first Mass. Even if you come for the hundredth Mass, or next Sunday you come for the Mass, remember this Mass that you are going to come here for, is your first mass. Imagine that this is the only first mass for you. The second thing that she says is that this is the only mass available in the world today for you. This is the only mass available for you today. Feel as though this is the only mass available. And feel, the third important is, 
as though this is the last mass of your life. Tomorrow you're gone. This is the last mass of your life. And if you and I can come with that desire, my dear friends, how much we can be nourished. Therefore, Jesus nourishes you by his body and blood. When he nourishes you by his body and blood, we know that Jesus wants to tell you the food item, because we all love food. That's why Gandhiji said, if God has to come again, in what form will he come? He came in the form of the Son of God. But if God has to come again into this world, he will come in the form of food. Because if you go and give food to someone, if you go and feed the hungry, they will ask you, are you Jesus? They will tell you, are you God? Because you have given me food. Yes, my dear friends, if he has nourished you from this table, you have to go and nourish others. And if you are not going to nourish others, then this nourishment that is going to take place in my body, the spiritual nourishment, is not going to happen. Therefore, if you find a hungry person there near the gate, and you come to celebrate and receive the body of Christ and then walk away ignoring that person, then it is not God who has come into you. You have to become a God in this world. That is why Jesus said finally, whoever eats my body and drinks my blood, I will raise him up on the last day. Again the same words that he uses, I will raise him up on the last day. In other words, he's going to give you your flesh and blood again. Because he is going to tell you, whoever eats my body and drinks my blood, I will raise him up on the last day. Is he going to give me my body? Is he going to give me my bones back? Yes. If the God the Father who said, let there be light, if Jesus Christ said, this is my body, and if he is going to say, hey, you, receive my body and blood, get up, come into the heavenly kingdom to celebrate the heavenly banquet. That is the final gift for each and every one of us as we come to celebrate this beautiful feast of Corpus Christi, the body and blood of Christ. And whenever we say body of Christ, you say, may it be so. In other words, Amen. Every time remember that you are going to say Amen is when the priest lifts it up and puts it in your tongue or in your hand and says, this is my body. You are saying, may it be so. Amen. Let us all stand for the creed.